Yeah, I believe you are here to see Jackie Marcus Schaefer, Jeff Schaefer. Paul Shear, Nick Crow. Austin. <laughs> Does anyone else feel like their chair is going to collapse? Yep. It's yeah, a, a little very bit. rickety chair yeah. situation. Precarious. I would deem it precarious. I was there the night the cast of the league died. <laughs> <laughs> or just got severely paralyzed. <laughs> Death by director chair. All right, so my job tonight uh, is to make sure that these guys get to be as funny as they want to be and <sighs> stay out of the way, right? Um, but my first question is for our lovely creators here. Um, I know that when you put the show together, you were looking for different comedic styles, different improv comedic styles. So I was wondering if you could tell me how you found this cast and where you found them. We found Jason Manzukis in a sweaty basement <laughs> in Boston. By the way, true story. Um, at the Del Close Marathon at UCB. In New York. In New York. Oh, it was New York. That's right. You were doing a Fenway. A I was doing a Boston show. You were doing theme a Boston theme show. <laughs> it stuck with me, my friend. Yeah. And then we just had a series of, of drinks with everybody, except for Nick Kroll, who famously complains that he got peppermint so tea. They, I, so, okay. So, I have a meeting with them. They're like, we're going to have a breakfast at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And I was like, ooh, I'm going to get a breakfast out of this. <laughs> and... At I that don't... point in our careers, that was the biggest selling point yeah. for any meeting. Every breakfast Will there be food? Yeah. We were like grandmas he... taking the Splendas in our purses. <laughs> it's the only reason he agreed to Right, so I, so I go to the meeting, and they, they just order, like, a coffee, so I get a tea, and I'm like, am I not going to get a full <laughs> meal out of this thing? And I didn't, and then... Uh... I... I want to say we got breakfast and drinks yeah, and we, tacos and cupcakes and tacos and cupcakes. Yeah. We well, you guys yeah, went. Yeah, you did. Sure. Yeah, you did. Kate. You I'm guys just, went I'm, to their house, right? We had. Well, no, we oh, had yeah. breakfast first at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Yep. And then we we're like, "This is great. Do you guys want to come over for well, dinner?" Well, you know what? It started. <laughs> we <laughs> met at a Jiffy Lube. I had to change their oil. And then they didn't even tip me. No, but and I want to say we had cocktails at breakfast and at dinner. Yeah, but here's they the thing. They made me. Yeah. <laughs> Which is hard to do. By the way, by the way, you almost lost the part then. Oh, Katie. Katie. Very low energy. Do you remember? And really not passionate about the project. But. Katie Azelton, do you remember? I had fallen in love with Katie Azelton, who I knew was my Jenny on first sight. But then Katie... Your daughter almost lost the role for you. Do you remember yeah, what your daughter she, did? Yeah, because she took Jeff to our bathroom and said, I want to weigh you. This is, <laughs> Bad this, idea. Does not, this does not have to be creepy, but it is creepy. <laughs> then she made him it take a and then she weighed him again. Again. Yep. And then she's like, Five God. pounds, yeah, Jeff. She Nicely was, done. Wait, wait. She was 13. It was... By the way, she was five, but she already understood the scientific method, and good on her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's. If you're going to famous... perform an experiment, you have a control. Jeff, having eaten tacos with Mark and Katie. <laughs> Jeff, without tacos, having eaten Mark and Katie. Here's how much it weighs. Anyway, the only person that we didn't, who's not here, who un unfortunately is somewhere in Europe, God knows where, John Lejoie, uh, we met because... Uh, a long, it's long time so ago. It's so perfect that he's in I Europe he's somewhere drifting. right now. So we had seen him on the internet, and this was back in like 2008 when the internet was like 65% porn, 35% John Lejoie videos, and like 5% work emails. <laughs> you, guys, you guys first tried to cast Rocco Sofredi as Taco, right? <laughs> Is my general understanding of how that goes? Billy Glide as Taco. <laughs> These so, are porn stars, everybody. Two of them. You know what? We'll keep, give everybody in the up, audience a minute up. to just Google. <laughs> so, so pretty, that's pretty much we, we had meals, we had, and this is what it sounded like, and we knew the chemistry was there. Yeah, yeah we had, we had, we basically had, we had lunches, breakfast, dinners, or tea. With, tea. One with, sad <laughs> with, tea. with the funniest people on the planet, and that was the show. Well, well, I didn't get cast though. 
<laughs> right. I didn't Eventually. get cast in season Although, one. Although, actually, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Jason. We so made you a promise, my friend. We were, we were, casting, we were casting season one, and, and we had all of our cast, and we told Jason... You're hilarious. If we can make it to season two, we have a great part. You are our reward, man. Well, but, yeah. but the, we, I don't know what it's, well, the show's done. It's who gives a shit anymore. But uh, <laughs> that we had, a, Jason was a part of our group, and I talked to Sheer. Yes. Who was like, I don't know anything about fantasy football. You didn't even want to come in. Well, I had met with you guys, and we had a great conversation, and I loved the way that they were talking about how they worked and the way that they wanted to do a show. And I knew everyone was kind of meeting with them, and it was a very big thing. We all were like, oh, that, these people, they're so, they, 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 they're they going to do this cool new show. And it went on for a couple of months. It was like, when is it going to happen? What is the show? And then all and of a sudden. you didn't know what it was about. No one knew what it, no was, one about. Knew it was about. It was very secretive. Oh, yeah. We never told anybody what the show was about. And then when we, we told Paul, he said, no. Well, guys, <laughs> somebody called me up. They were like, so it's about fantasy football. I was like, oh, I can't improvise about fantasy football. I'll pass. And then everyone kept on auditioning. And thankfully, Nick called me up and said, hey, you should just go and audition for it because you don't need, like, it's not like you have to give stats. Like, and, I, and, and in my mind, I was like, oh, all right. And, and, I, and I think Although, Nicole... Although, I found out afterwards that Ellen Pompeo is a medical expert. Yes. <laughs> it just seemed intimidating to me because... It Ron seemed Perlman like... has one giant arm <laughs> and horns that have been... But, like, I think to the testament of the show... And I think this is the reason why the show works so well is the buy-in for a lot of people, I think, are like, oh, it's about fantasy football. But it really is about the lives of these people in their 30s. And I think as the show progressed, we got more and more audience. People were like, I don't even play fantasy football. I like the show more than my boyfriend. I like it. It's like all these th things that we would hear. And I think people like, you realize that you didn't have to be like, oh, I knew how many yards somebody ran in a week or something like that. And, you know? and you well in, said. And you, in <laughs> and you in particular, Paul, it was just, you, it, the more you didn't know, the more enjoyable it was to yeah. on you for not knowing it. Absolutely. And, and the show was always about a, a bunch of friends who play fantasy football. It was not a show about fantasy football. And the reason why the show got any of the fans, any of you who watched it, it's not because you loved fantasy football, whether you do or not, it was because of these people. Right here, funny. and Mark and John. Um, oh, so that's how you found them all? Oh, but you know what? I oh, cut okay. off Nick, too. But I, but you Wait, Paul's going. got more to say. Uh, but no, but Nick was saying that like, the original groupings were everyone kind of passing around different roles, right? Yes, right? I think yeah. so. I will say that it's the best testing experience I've ever had in my life, really? where they just put in... We were all in like one sort of holding room, Definitely. all of your favorites, and a couple people who didn't make the show. Also you gotta, your you gotta keep the network Gary happy, my Oldman. <laughs> Marshala Ali. <laughs> Marshala <laughs> Ali? As why Kevin. You, why, as someone who famously can't pronounce names, Paul, why would you choose that one to try and do? <laughs> Marshala. I always will challenge myself. <laughs> I don't <laughs> stray away don't from Don't say challenge. Gabriel Simonet, just say Precious. It's so easy. Precious as Kevin. <laughs> it was close. Everybody did. Everybody did try different roles except but it was Katie, cool. who played Jenny, and Nick, who was somehow Missing. always locked in as Roxanne. <laughs> but it really was. It was. They would just take us like Rochambeau and just be like, all right, let's put these two people together in a room, and let's put these two people together in a room. So it wasn't like... When you test normally for like a network show, it's like they get their star attached and then they're like, and then we'll see who the star likes to be in a room with. This was very different. It's this was professional just, and this was not. Yeah. This, this is it. so much better. Yeah. No, but I think to your credit that like you wanted to find people who had the best chemistry. You didn't build the show around like, okay, Mandy Moore wants to do a comedy show. Let's if Mandy Moore wanted to do this show, would you have said yes? You were always my Jenny. <sighs> also, I love you. she did not want to have tea with us. <laughs> she could pay for her own yeah. breakfast. No, the whole, but by the way, the reason why was because all we wanted to do was make the funniest show with the funniest people. And these were the funniest people. Yep. <laughs> all right, so... Given that you're all the funniest people we've ever met, um, what, what part of your actual personality 
is most evident in your character, please feel free to answer for your fellow panelists. And please especially feel free to answer for John and Mark who are not here. I would say Jason and Rafi's love of knives. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> But I will also say, Jason, uh, I think like every maniac in every state and city I've ever been with Jason, the, some true maniac is like, I'm Rafi! Uh, I want to hug you! Uh, there are and, like five people here tonight that are like, I'm you, oh, dude! No! And what people don't understand is like, Jason is a, is a deep germaphobe. <laughs> I don't want to touch any of you people. Yeah. <laughs> For real. So it's a great joy to watch him play a monster and then around the world get approached <laughs> by monsters <laughs> thinking they have found I'm their the, lighthouse. I'm the, person, I'm the person that the grossest guy in the bar is like, I'm gonna make him smell my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> they want to impress you. Oh, I don't want to f any of your wives. <laughs> Even though a lot of you think that's a cool thing to ask me to do, <laughs> I don't want to do My it. My dad was doing a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else? I think, though, to your credit, like, Jeff and Jackie were really great at really creating this amazing world and stories and archetypes, and then we could all bring a little bit of ourselves into it, and then those things got folded in, and so everything started to nicely blur. It was sort of like, oh, that's a fun thing we can kind of chase, and so over the course of seven years, I think a lot of, like, little improv runs that may have not even made it into an episode all of a sudden became a little storyline here and there. I, th I always think back to the clear hair, which is like a joke that we made in a previous episode. I only even made it in, like someone's like, oh, you're bald. I'm like, I'm not bald, I have clear hair. <laughs> and it was just like something funny to say on set and then like an episode came and like, I have clear hair. And I was like, oh, all right, there we go. And like, and, but I think that that was like kind of the beauty of them is that they were really attuned to like feeding into what we liked and, 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 and kind of and serving us And up. also like, for example, we all had a league inside of the league. We had a fantasy football league and, and some of us had played before, some of us had not. Uh, Steve, I was a pro. Steve was the only one who had been in <laughs> leagues really before. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, but when, we, when we started the League of the League, Steve and I are looking at each other because we both played a lot and we're like, oh, this is us. We're going to we kill got, these guys. I'll see, you, yeah. I'll see you in the championship, my friend. And How did it work out, Jackie? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. Have I introduced Katie you to Katie, Katie Azelton, yeah. our, our year one winner? Because she read a book. <laughs> and the first four years went the, Katie the Nick, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. The best, the best thing that you just missed was that when you congratulated Katie on winning, Steve went, because she read a book. <laughs> As if, and like, it, the true shame for Katie was that she read a book. Football. She won because she could read. <laughs> <laughs> It's not I'm about, so that's not nerd. <laughs> It's about your gut. Well, so, yeah, so Steve followed his gut to last place, <laughs> like, almost every year. Well, that's what, so it was like, and that was the joy was, so Kevin, his character, like, really was, wanted to Passionate. Win, passionate about it, passionate about it. and Psyched could, every year. Yeah, and just Make up trailer first day, who's yeah. setting the league up, Paul's yeah. got it going, yeah. I got stat sheets, and then... Every year. Yeah. My, By the way. My favorite story yeah. about you in the makeup trailer is one morning, Steve is just one fucking losing it Monday morning, and he's like, I can't believe I lost. He's going through his lineup. It's just horrible. And he's sitting there with John Lajoie, and John just innocently says to him, you know, who'd you lose to? And he was like, you. You, you idiot. I lost to you, man. John, who never set his lineup, didn't know he was in the league, and Steve's just... Oh. Oh. People keep saying, you want to get the show back together? I'm like, I don't care. I just want to play that one more time. One more time. One more year. If you we ever win film that another scene, Azleton I want I would, all of you. I, Steve of said it. earlier before he would happily be edited out of the I show. I don't give a I just as want long to as he can win a season <laughs> of and, fantasy. And truly, Lejoie is like French-Canadian. Yeah. And 
has no idea. Didn't like, even know you had a set of lineups. Auto draft and auto play the entire season. By the way, I never changed his lineup ever that, once. That never week, in last place. The week that he beat you, I guarantee he thought the season was already over. <laughs> I know it. He it was did. October. Because he literally, I know. And he literally. He didn't know it started. When I, told, when I told him how funny it was, what we had overheard, he goes, I didn't know that was still on. God. <laughs> like it was a show, it'd be canceled. <laughs> you got beaten by a foreigner. <laughs> Truth by a be Canadian. told, John Lajoie did not know this was a TV show. That's why he's not here. We didn't want to wreck the illusion. He also, just came to because hang out. he's Canadian, we're building that wall up yes. north. North. <laughs> Get out of here. I called that Canadian wall. I called ICE. I was like, get Le Joie out of here. No more poutine. <laughs> Did you what have was the a question? question? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wrote like two questions down. And, uh, no, um, this, this question just came to me and it's not at all inspired by stories you were telling backstage, which is, um, you guys worked with a lot of animals in this show. Uh, Do you have any uh, uh, fond memories worse. of that? So, this, is, this is where they hate us. Yeah, we... We, over the course of 84 episodes, we've worked with the entire, like, animal family tree. And the, the funny I thing is, bulls, we worked with bears, bull. birds, a the monkey. Monkeys. The, first, a little known we'll, fact is we'll Jeff Schaefer loves animal comedy. So we would go into the office, yeah. Jeff and I were the writer's room, and we would look at the whiteboard, and Jeff just couldn't stop writing animal stories. And, and they just got... And, they, and, and they I never learned a lesson. Here's the thing. Us. I'm going to tell you a little bit. I don't know how many of you are from Hollywood or know animal trainers who live out in Canyon Country, but it's very simple. This is, this is what you're going to have. This is a... This is, no matter what show you're on, this is the uh, dialogue you're going to have with an animal trainer. I need this mad, you know, mad lib, dog, bird, bull, whatever, to do this. Great, okay, he can do that. That'll be $10,000. And then I need him to do this. Great, okay, we just need to train him. Great, okay, great. Then you get on the set. For instance, a monkey. I need this monkey to do this and this and this. Great, he can do that. We just need to train him. You get there on the day, and you're there, and you're about to put a live monkey in a small car that's driving like, down a... On that's, someone's head. Well, that, that, we got like, to that. Whatever. That was, that, that monkey, the heart wants what it wants. Anyway, but, <laughs> We'll get to that. But so we're now gonna put a live monkey in a small car that's driving on a very real street in very real valley. And I go, so the monkey's gonna do the things we talked about. And he goes, well, I don't know, it's a wild animal. <laughs> and then that trainer got in the trunk far away from the monkey and then let us shoot the scene. So if shit went down, he was, n first of all, protected. <laughs> we were not. And had no way to capture the monkey. You know, and by the way, in that animal trainer's defense, he was close enough to continually give it gummy worms. Yes. <laughs> he, I always thought he fed it Sour Patch Kids, and I thought he didn't like that because it looked like cute little humans, and I thought that was sending the wrong idea. So, so that's the monkey trainer. We worked with a bear. Oh, oh my bear. God, that f***ing bear. And this was, I was like, if I, the bear. if I die making a episode of The League, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be furious because it's a giant bear it was this and, close and the bear is meant to run at us stop rear up roar and that's it okay and why will it stop because there is a piece of floss yes. yeah a tiny like this high off the ground a tiny little wire <laughs> that i said to the guy it's electrified and i said to the guy "Ooh." So should we be careful? Is this dangerous for nah, us? Nah, it won't hurt you. He goes, nah, it'll be fine. <laughs> and then the bear would charge, and if it didn't do whatever, if he didn't like the way it was coming in, he would have a bucket on his hip of cookies, and he would, like Oreos. Oreos. Take an Oreo and throw it at the bear and be like, get the f out of there. <laughs> now you get away from there. You get out of here, you m now, when I saw, when I saw these trainers throwing candy at these wild animals, I was like, this is wrong. Then I had kids. I'm like, got it. Works. Makes sense. It's the same thing. That's how we get my dad into his bed. Get out of here, you Get out of here, you Go back there. Ride your skateboard. Jeff reminded me, I guess I had to simulate sex in front of a bull. Yes. At the high school reunion, there was a bull that got loose. So I wanted the animal trainer for this bull, a large live bull in a real auditorium. I, I can only kindly describe her as a crone. She was a 45 pound, four foot woman with a stick. And she was the bull trainer and she was gonna tell the bull what to do. Basically what she ended up doing, if the bull wanted to move, the bull was just, she was basically just water skiing behind the bull, getting cold. The bull went on a walkabout through our cameras, our lights, and everything. Oh, I remember that. 
That yeah, was it like, was crazy. It was like just a bull. wild ball. Everyone's frozen because the bull is just Please checking tell me out. Hundred background actors not to move. Don't move. Yeah, but by the way, none of this, none of this, all of the fear that you're hearing in these in these brave uh, actors' voices, We're none of so it compares brave. to what Steve he had Jeff. to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> what Steve Francis had to deal with what? confronting birds. I don't like birds. <laughs> I'll stand in front of the bear. Remember me? I was the one going, ah, right, get out of here, bear. Remember how the scene ended and the bear turned around? But you kept sending that parakeet at me a hundred times. <laughs> Nothing was ever good enough. No shot was ever good enough. The, the wings would come out six feet, and you were like, I'm like, dude, six it, feet? It was a big. You it's weren't a six, six foot wingspan. You on weren't a bear that day, dude. The the bird. This, this is embarrassing. They for got you. a big bird, dude. That was a big. Parachute. You remember how big those wings were, Jeff? They couldn't. Oh, they couldn't no. fly in the cage. Steve, yeah, I remember. That, I remember very clearly. This parakeet was in a cage, mm -hmm. and this yeah. cage had a small door. And from that door, the I bird could stick its head out in a frightening manner, and you would go. Ah! And run away. You it had no home. soul, Jeff. You didn't look honest. in the eyes like you I did. You keep saying the bird was ruining the take. You ruined every take. Every take. It had no soul. They got the wrong bird that I'll day. This thing was out for blood, bro. I'll be honest. This was not. This was a BJV bird. Here's what I'll say. I've since worked with that bird. You have and not. The bird is very talented <laughs> and has some unkind things to say about oh. you. Good. I hope that bird's here tonight. I love to. Talk to that bird one Ladies more time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the bird. <laughs> Six foot wings and all. Wah! Wah! I don't know. The saddest thing is that bird and you have been looking for a project to do together for a while, and then yeah. it just went, and anyway, it goes south, it goes south. It could have been you and that Clint Eastwood and the monkey. It could have been you and that bird, man. <laughs> Any which way but Every loose. Week. <laughs> uh, so as we all work on our scripts for the spinoff uh, yeah. between the bird and Steve, um, there's a lot of your own life, a bit of your own life in this show. Some stuff that I think is a little unbelievable. What's the most unbelievable thing that actually happened to you that made it into the league? Well, I won't, I, I don't know that the most unbelievable thing was us, but we, you know, in our group of friends, there is one guy who's a very dear friend of ours, and we couldn't believe how many stupid things that he has done that have become Kevin's stories. And I think for me, the thing that Those no, aren't Jeff's stories? No, some well, of them are. Well, here's the thing. I always like to say the Jeff, worst part of every one of these characters is, is me. For sure. Like, <laughs> for sure. But, and there are a lot of things about us in the show, but I have to say, um, our friend who put Icy Hot on his own balls, that's a real story. He went in the middle of the night and he put Icy Hot on his own balls and then she had to wipe him like a baby. So when I think back to that scene, which you did so beautifully, Steve, with your legs in the air and the ankles crisscross, wiping. How did have I never won an Emmy? I know. <laughs> That was the episode, man. That was it. And would you uh, would you agree? The wiper or the white bee? Who wins the Emmy? Who it was wins, so tough. Now, we now that that obviously was a, a scene that was staged for comedic value. But let's talk about the time that Steve burned his own balls mm. when he had not balls. The the root. No, of I, the bur shaft. I burned the, the shaft. almost the bridge. So yeah, the, the, shaft. the upper so, shaft. And the sound is that, so we were doing we were doing an episode. Uh, it was called Old Smoke Crotch, where um, <laughs> Steve finds a gray hair down there as as. Katie, what would you call it? his graying nethers? <laughs> so, in an effort to fix fix his graying nethers, he starts to dye the stuff down there. Things go wrong with the hair dryer. Anyway, he is all he needs to do is he needs to run in the room with his crotch sort of on fire, which we had a little smoker. There's a little smoker. It's like a it's like a it's like, like a little, about the size of a lighter. Yeah, like a hot glue gun almost. Yeah, you know, like without, that big. Right, without the glue. Yeah. So it's just got this little heated part that's going to heat the stuff enough to smoke. So it's all tucked in in the right ways. But as Steve is running around, very animated, very funny, I guess things got flipped around, and the hot part. It got twisted into my underwear, and the hot part, instead of pointing out, was now branding my above my uh, what would be the north end. Okay, and above was, the wall, it was so yeah. <laughs> it was so bad. The heat was. I started screaming so bad. I just kept screaming. Get and it we off. think he's you just know, in the show. And I ripped my pants off, <laughs> and then <laughs> you. Well, not yet. Wayne. Not to our not that, to our friend Wayne, Wayne the medic came that, over. Ladies and gentlemen, is how a fetish is created. <laughs> yeah. So then we had a medic, uh, a medic named Wayne 
who then had to get <laughs> come into my trailer and apply. Wayne was is special. Wayne here tonight? Yeah, Wayne, where are you, Wayne? On set medic, Wayne. No. Wayne okay. was with us for all seven seasons, lovely, and I don't guy. think he was professional. He had to apply apply ointment to my upper shaft with it. We put you let him on. do that. Well, what am I gonna do? He came in. It was. Just, he asked to do just it. Just say, give me the ointment. I'll I thought do Jeff it sent him. I walked into um, our craft services truck had like a little like a metal wire holding the door up, and I walked straight into it one day, <laughs> and uh, it was like an invisible wire. Like, just, yeah. I just like walked straight into it, and I went, and they're like, "Oh, uh, okay." And I sat down in, in in one of the rooms, like to, and and they called Wayne in the medic, <laughs> and Wayne came in, and Wayne is Wayne's not here, right? <laughs> <laughs> but this is being recorded. Yeah. You know what you want? Yeah, okay. For so, Wayne, Wayne sent his great camera guy, crew Wonderful, here. wonderful medic. Uh, but Wayne walked in and looked at my nose, and he goes, "Oh God." <laughs> And then he started panicking. He truly yeah. started panicking. <laughs> and I was like, okay, good. And then, thank you guys very kindly let me go. Uh, to his credit, your nose looked real fucked up he, that day. Yeah. We tried to shoot. I put a Band-Aid on it. <laughs> I sent you to and they put surgery. makeup over the Band-Aid, and then there was just blood seeping through the Band-Aid. And they're like, hey, you know what? Why don't you just uh, go to the doctor and get this cleaned up today? By the way, the least you got to go home. The worst one, we're in Vegas. We're shooting the we're shooting the Vegas draft, and that's when everyone got to got introduced to uh, Brolo El Cunado, uh, Rafi in the league, and so we're all there in Vegas for like three or four days, and. Jason. That was only three or four days. Felt yeah. like three it years. It felt like we lived there. Yeah, we lived there for. It felt like at least we a week. We lived in the MGM for a week. We never walked out. We would work all day long and not go outside, breathe like casino air, and then go to a steakhouse and then gamble and, and gamble, <laughs> and then would wake up with, I think, what the the most disturbing farts in the world. <laughs> so, but so poor Jason, who has a uh, a very intense. Egg allergy. Life threatening. Life threatening. Yeah. So he and, So what did you do? You, it was granola, right? He was right? with me, unfortunately. Yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a yogurt parfait. Okay. A yogurt parfait from the Starbucks in the and MGM Grand. And we looked at the label. The you label did not list label. eggs, but when I, at, when I took two bites and something was wrong, and I said to the woman, do you make these here? And she said, yeah, they make them in the kitchen here. I'll call Dan. And she was like, yeah, they have egg whites in it. <laughs> And I was like, well, it should say, uh, and then I was like, okay. And so the Vegas medic came and was like. Thank God it wasn't Wayne. It wasn't, no. I but also, like, Wayne Jason, you, like, Vegas hold on, medic. in Wayne's defense, as soon as he heard you were sick, he went and checked out Steve's penis. <laughs> He's like, I'll go look at that thing again. But, um, like, but the one part of the story is, like, you know that you're so allergic to it, but you also knew that if you took the right precaution, you would knock yourself out for the day. Yeah, so if I took the medication that was necessary, it would mean I couldn't shoot the show. Right. And so, and so there was a, a, a period where it was trying to thread that needle, and then I started to look really weird. <laughs> and so I was wheeled out on a stretcher into an ambulance and taken to an emergency room, and this where I remained for seven hours. And then you came back. And then came back and, and shot, shot that night. Yeah. That and day. You said, and you don't remember any of it. Yeah, I was all jacked up on meds, and I have no recollection of None. any of you the were scenes hilarious. we shot. We I, shot like three scenes yeah. that night. I will say this. I have almost no recollection of any of these stories. <laughs> uh, no, I'm with you. I'm looking for a similar story about, once again, John or Mark, who are not here. Mm. Throw them right under the bus. Here's the thing. I mean, we're having no John? problem throwing each other under the bus yeah. uh, at this point. It's I, a very big bus. Yeah. I'm trying to think with John. Like, John what? and the lip. I mean, you want to talk about the Oh, lips? well, because they're not oh, here, yeah. I'll say this. In the same episode in the Vegas draft, Mark pooped in the pool. <laughs> Wait, for real? He, like, took a real dump in that pool. <laughs> and the cool thing here. about the MGM Grand, I'm gonna, I can say here. this I now. I will say this. I they remember were footed, that. They the, like, footed, even, oh, the footage of that poop in the pool won Sundance. It yeah. did. <laughs> it was very it's artistic. on Netflix now. It's like the plastic bag in American Beauty. It was very artistic. <laughs> it just kept swirling and swirling on the lazy river. Yeah. And the people at the MGM Grand said, don't worry about it. We do that three or four times a day here. No reason to worry. And... <laughs> But I'm trying to think, I mean, you know... Uh... Well, poor LeJoie. LeJoie got the short end of stick for a variety of reasons. In that he was getting naked on All a, the time. Like, regularly. Constantly. He was the beefcake. So great, was I. Great ass. What? Great he, ass. I he, wasn't the beefcake, but I was always, for some reason, naked. <laughs> well, 
taking a shit, whatever. Yeah. A lot of those wounds were self-inflicted. Uh, yeah, but poor, poor John had a ton, and Mark also had a ton of sex scenes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, by the way, I mean... He's Eskimo Brothers with uh, Prince Harry now. I know. Yeah, he had a, right. uh, uh, Was that season two, episode two, or nope, season one? season one. Season Wait, one she was on the two, show? Meghan Markle yeah. was, yeah, Meghan Markle yeah. was what? on the league. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't know that? <laughs> what the, year? You weren't in that... Meghan the Markle. The vaginal hubris. The very vaginal first hubris. show. She's at the dinner table? Yeah. 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 Season one, show... I gotta go back and watch this show. We have an Oscar winner and a princess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the very first show we did after the pilot. Stars. After the pilot, she was the divorcee that Mark met uh, talking Made to out the, in the bar. Holy sh! I remember like, that now. Yeah, I think her credit is like woman number two. Nope, nope. She was Megan. Is she? she was wow. Megan. Yeah, I named her. Nope. Yeah, we yeah. gave her a name. Megan. She was, yeah. So Taco used Eskimo Brothers to get into the club, and then Mark met this divorcee. I know that's what you and think of all married, women your husband's of the kids. All women woman number two. two. Everybody go to the that's ever seen Mark. Women number two. They are nameless, faceless people. By the way, she was lovely. Great. Which, is, yeah. which is why Jason and no one else was invited to the royal wedding, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's Only a good Jason. time. Yeah, yeah. I had a great time. <laughs> Did you bring your own Can hot dogs? Can you imagine? <laughs> oh my I God. still contend if, if Meghan Markle had been in a scene with Rafi on the league, she would be ineligible to be a princess. <laughs> I think the queen sure. would have think loved that it. That would have been the line. That would have been the line. That footage, they that go, being no, said, no, I do, no. That being no said, the, that I one. do know for a fact that the Queen is a huge fan of the league. Of the league. <laughs> I think the Queen's all. <laughs> <laughs> She's like the white knuckler. Well, originally she Wait, was on. like she was a Jason. big she was a big Sunny fan, and she's like, "Well, I'll check this show out." Oh, yeah. And I'm then up. she was like, "Then she came and she's like, I like it more than Sunny." It was weird. That's the Queen, but now she's back at Sunny and she's having a great time. Everyone wins. And that's how a Vanity Fair writer made this about the royals. <laughs> um, all right, uh, if anyone in the audience has questions, we don't have a mic in the audience, but if you want to scream at the castle league, great, right there. Don't scream at us. <laughs> Please scream do. Toward us. Deliver your questions in ASMR style. <laughs> oh. Just thinking about you guys. Shiva, Shiva Kamini, Kamini Somersunder Krum. Shiva Kamini Somersunder Krum. Very simply. Um, in my high school, Carefully. there was a woman. Yeah. <laughs> it was as we could, close was, as we could legally get to. There was a woman in my high school, a girl in my high school whose name was Shiva Kamini Somasandaram. And uh, we changed it for legal reasons to Shiva Kamini Somakandarkram. <laughs> different name, different person. Um, so, and oh, I God. still haven't talked to her. I mean, she's got to know. She, <laughs> it wasn't a big high school. And by the way, the, my high school friends who have a Shiva, her picture's on, on our trophy. So when, like, I've had drafts with my high school friends and people go by and go like, oh, that's so derivative of the league. And my friend's like, this is the original trophy. <laughs> but by the way, she should be so thrilled that she is being represented by Janina Gavinkar, who is yeah. amazing. Very talented. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was, uh, but she- the only, the only cast member invited to the royal wedding, by the way. Yeah, little trivia there. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. But um, anyway, so that's, that's how it came. We have so many connections to the royals, people. <laughs> she's a doctor. She's not honored. Yeah. She's ashamed. Yeah. She's a real but job, you know unlike it, the rest of it's us. It's interesting, though, too, we were talking about this today, that there are certain things in the show that people are very adamant that they want to tell us, but it's also slightly wrong. Like you were saying today, like... So I freaking hate when people say zipper. Zipper. That's the wrong f word. Uh, it's a shit zipper. Shit zipper doesn't even make sense. Uh -oh. If you're, if you're going to use zipper, it's it's zipper fairy. It's a zipper fairy, a zipper fairy. and a shit zipper. Oh, poor Alina. For me, poor it's, five -year -old girl. it's when people are like, ah, Ralphie. Ralphie. <laughs> well, we and were I'm like, we were. Do you watch the show? <laughs> we were out yesterday, and this guy came up to us here in Austin. He's like, Taco. Ah! And that was a great moment. Uh, and Steve, to be you, fair, we were at Torchies. Yeah. Maybe That's an Austin reference, you. F uh, Steve, could you tell that story about being shopping with your kids? Oh yeah, what, uh, I was Christmas shopping. This was probably season two or three, and uh, I was with my son. We were in a mall, and this guy comes out of them like a Fuddruckers, day drunk. <laughs> Lock size with me. I'm like, oh, f this is our target demographic. 
And then, <laughs> yep. This is this Just is how my tea drinkers in general. Ooh. This is how my son is gonna see someone else's. <laughs> and from across this mall, he yells, "Shiva!" And I'm like, "Okay, man." And then I was like, started walking my son. I get to, and then he goes, "Show me that pretty." D that. I <laughs> So, and now that's all your son says. That's all he says. Show me that pretty <laughs> dad. Show me that. What does that mean? And then you I show do, them. I have to say, when the show was on, going to the Super Bowl with you guys or going through any football stadium or any airport, I was like, we were both very proud and very sorry. Because our, do you our remember John, you John guys, lost? We lost John at the Super Bowl the first year. Oh. In New we Orleans. left in the New Orleans Super Bowl. They had that break. They had that, uh, that when the electricity went out. John went to go get food, and he didn't come back till like three minutes left in the game. Wait, wait, but but no. then he was in, wasn't he in the thing with Robert Kraft? That was a different game. Oh. He disappeared, yeah. and he ended up in the owner's box. <laughs> and we all just saw you it. You could on see him the giving screen. Robert Kraft a card for a uh, Orchids of Asia. <laughs> Orchids of Asia. <laughs> If you ever, yes, if you oh, ever yeah. get to your sixth Super Bowl, you'll want this. Yes. That's what I, can I ask a question? How many times a day, Jeff, do you think about, or things that go by, like Orchids of Asia, or stuff that you go, oh, oh I, mean, I could put thing. a whole thing together on this. Jackie and I talk about all that. First of all, anytime Cam Newton has a press conference, Paul texts us. Oh, yeah. It Because I was like, this outfit, come on now. <laughs> I mean, kneeling. Oh, God. There yeah, we've done so I mean, much we with would, kneeling. We know what we would, I think we know what we would have done with kneeling, uh, which is that Jenny... Something tells me Jenny would have Jenny, something to Jenny, do with this. Jenny will ding, salute ding, your ding, flag. Ding, ding. Jenny will salute your flag, but she will not kneel while doing so. so <laughs> That's uh, about right. So, but it's I a blowjob thing, people. Yeah, I think guys, so. She's not going to kneel It was a, it was a little won. too... Yeah. But no, I think every... The, we used to say the NFL was like our rich uncle that we never get to meet, but he keeps giving us presents. Like, yeah. it's still... It's like... It's this crazy thing. Every year now when the show is... Now that the show is off the air, when all these things happen with the NFL, whether Robert Kraft decides to get a happy ending right before the, the Patriots do with the AFC Championship or whatever. I mean, it's crazy. It's like, you go like, oh my God, we would have had so much fun with this. My Rush question defends is like, him. Like, <laughs> did you guys like... Be, and this is like a very stupid question, but did you guys like being on, like, cable... Or would you have preferred now in the world where like Netflix and everything is out there, like would you have preferred to be able to have longer episodes and go dirtier? Or did you think it was actually good to be kind of constrained by the time and the content? Well, many people may not know this. I mean, the, the time thing, let me speak to that first because it's less fun. The time thing, the most frustrating creative part of making the show for me was watching Jeff endlessly negotiate and fight with the network to always get more time. Um, and we, we did and by a By the way, they've since training. apologized now because we used to fight over like, a lot it of was supposed training. to be twenty one fifteen. We turned in eighty four episodes. We turned in two on time. Yeah, we would was, fight and fight Jeff's and fight point and fight. Of pride. And now they're like because, because FXX was full of original new content. They're like we can't <laughs> like bump our new shows. Well, by the way, that was the best year. The Mad about you isn't gonna wait for anyone. The first the first year we were on FXX, they were like go as long as you like. So that was a pain in the butt. But the greatest thing was they told us at the beginning of shooting. There's five words you cannot say. Don't go near them, you can't say them, these are our, the words you're not allowed I'm now to say. going to scream those words <laughs> into this microphone. And then they added a sixth because we abused that word and then it became literally 20th Century Fox across every platform policy that we weren't wow. allowed to use that and word. And by the way, and that was a But it forced us to come up with things like frittata. Well, Nick, Nick, Nick luckily had frittata, which was fantastic. So you know, we were doing a story, we were doing a story about Chinatown and there was- What a, a gift, what a yeah. gift. <laughs> what a joy to the world. Oh, we were, we were doing- Collectively this, us, thank you, Nick. Like, you, Nick, Nick the, solved that The story that was very simple, which is that if there's a Chinese mentally challenged person who only speaks Chinese and you're in Chinatown, he may only know 40 words, but that's 40 more words than you know in Chinatown. So he can ask for butter, or where's the bathroom, or whatever. He's a genius compared to you. Anyway, we, uh, Bobby Lee was playing this Chinese mentally challenged person, and as he always likes to joke about, it, he's like, so what do you need to do for my costume? We would go, no, you're good. And then, <laughs> but, but we, needed to, we needed to talk about this Chinese mentally challenged person, and we used other languages, like, you can't do that. And Nick luckily had something in his act, for, for, which was... Frittata. Frittata. Yeah. And so that stuck. But like, so I guess the answer is this. I'm glad that we had certain restraints because right. we always got to make more colorful language. The time thing was a huge bummer. And if you ever want to see, like, if you guys are actual fans, and I know this is so stupid and it sounds like you're going to If you guys are actual fans? No, no. That's, <laughs> Jeff Schaefer is like, you know what? F you guys. I see. You guys, you guys saw you were here for casual a casual fans. You guys. 
You know what? Jeff's like, they've barely asked any questions. Cut to all we do is keep talking. (laughs) And we are now asking each other questions Questions, on stage. It's so weird. These are the fans. Uh, It's so weird because I thought they'd been a little mouthy. Anyway, go back. I swear you'll have the most fun you'll ever have if you go back and somehow... Blue Steal race. a DVD player and watch the DVDs with the extended cuts. You will see so much fun stuff that is so great that we couldn't put in the show. Do you guys know what a DVD player is? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a smaller laser disc player. You yeah. follow? <laughs> All right, let's open What do we got? Yeah. More questions. questions right More there. questions. The question is, have any of us kept any mementos from the show? I actually Jason have a Ruxin sweater. I took a Ruxin sweater. It was he had a the V-neck. best. Uh, it was a cardigan. I have the Kevin MacArthur Chicago Bears jersey. Oh, yeah. We have the sack. I have Jenny's. Jenny's Chicago jersey. I you have, do? Uh, yeah, I do. I have Baby Want Jeffrey it? in my basement. I kept Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to go on. <laughs> Ellie. He's about <laughs> thirteen now, and uh, <laughs> how old is he? He's about 13, <laughs> 13. now. Yeah. It was it was funny because when Brie, Lar- him, right? when, Brie Larson wow. did, when Brie Larson did the show, she had the script for Room that she was reading. Nick read it and was like, okay, cool. <laughs> I see how this works. Ba- baby Jeffrey forever unclean indeed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jason, you, Jason, you and Brie Larson in that episode was just hilarious. The, yeah. Oof. Was- <laughs> now wait, she's got one an Oscar. You, wait, one of, you guys won an, one of you guys won an Oscar. Which, who won the Oscar? Did you win it or did Brie Larson win an Oscar? It was not me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did not win the Oscar. Paul, how did you not, Mr. Pop Culture, you know, sort of vault? What did you take? Did you I, take I took hats. I mean, right? That's what I had to kind of take. I took uh, a selection of fedor- uh, fedoras uh, and that I was reticent to even take and now they're in a, a Tupperware that I have like some mementos in, but it's, a, it's like a good three or four fedoras all stacked up. I don't, I don't know where they will be, and I don't know what I envision anyone to do with them if they ever find them. I got Wayne the medic. He lives in my backyard now in the pool house. <laughs> Any other questions? What do we got? Back yeah. there. Who was the coolest oh. athlete to work JJ. with? JJ. JJ Watt was JJ pretty Watt. cool, JJ. man. Oh, but you, uh, you loved, you loved, um, you loved uh, Randall Cobb, Katie. You forget about your love for Randall Cobb. I don't forget about Randall Cobb. I know. I, I would always I think about him. him huh? Oh, Katie would just look at me and go, those eyes. He's so those eyes. pretty. And Terrell, he was so nice. Terrell nice. Suggs. Terrell Suggs. Yeah, I love Terrell funny. Suggs. He was great. Very funny. funny. Not only like doing the show, but then like, can I do the promos for one of your seasons? Like, because he came and did promos with yeah. us. Yeah. He Chad was. Ochocinco was pretty funny. Oh, my God. He was Chad crazy. Ochocinco was in Vegas with us and had four different cell phones. <laughs> they were stacked Eight up. Ate McDonald's three days, three times a day. Yeah. And, and, like and roller skated. With- we'd go to bed and, like, wake up and look at Twitter, and there were pictures of him at, like, five in the morning well, alone I at a like slot machine. Well, I had, like, a 7 a.m. call time and walked across the... the Casino, and he was sitting there in his underwear. Yeah, um, yeah. M- no, the MGM asked him to put on a shirt. Yeah. There was a moment with him. We were in the top floor of the MGM Grand. Oh, These beautiful, this, uh, like this, you know, the, the the most elite luxury rooms you could possibly get. And there was a lot of security when we were going up there. We're like, oh, is this for us? And they're like, no, this is actually for this prince. Uh, he's here, and this is his security. And and so like, you know, he came through, Chad, and he was like. Uh, oh, that's crazy, all the security. Like, yeah, it's for the, some prince. And we told him who the prince was. And he immediately just tweeted, up on the, at the, the 25th floor, I'm here with the prince. And then, like, all MGM security is like, you cannot reveal his location. You must take that down. This is a huge security risk. And then he just tweeted, take the shot, take the shot. <laughs> Any other questions? Right here. Oh, jeez. Were he, there any complicated or expensive Jason, setups? <laughs> Jason, I have sh- one job. Nothing was expensive. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Well, he's um, so close to the front, they didn't hear the question, right? So we, the network was very good. I mean, we basically did whatever. They, they never came to set. There was, they were outlined, so there were no table reads. It, and I don't know, I want to talk about how the show was made for a second, because I don't know, it was such an intimate thing. It was like, 
there, there was no one else. It's like these people and Mark and, and John are the only people making the show. And, and Wayne else. the medic. <laughs> and Wayne. Mm-hmm. And Wayne the medic, yeah, who's uh, standing there looking lovingly at Steve. But, uh, so it was this very intimate, very fun experience. Um, we got to do basically everything. I mean, there were certain things, certain people, uh, I won't name them because they'll name themselves, always wanted to talk about uh, their character's friendship with Johan van der Sloot, the murderer, the Dutch murderer. <laughs> now, let me be clear about that. <laughs> it seemed to me to make sense that Rafi would be best friends with JVS, the man who killed Natalie Holloway. Yeah. So it, we'd be in a normal scene about where he's just talking about normal things like wanting f- his sister. Go, no, no, not today, no. Anyway, anyway, when I was hanging out with JVS, no. All right, when I was not hanging out with JVS, no. <laughs> well, what, what was the most... Shh, no, no, Jason, no. What did we have? What was we the most a- expensive thing, though? Do we have, do we I'll tell you do- the most expensive thing that almost... That we, okay, so we were... The season was done. We had finished the season, oh. but... But yeah. we had, there had been a joke this whole year that Andre had contracted thrush, a female um, genital disease, uh, sort of a yeast infection. And, and so they were calling him yeast mode. And the whole plan of this was for him to meet up with Marshawn Lynch, who was beast mode. Now, due to a whole, we, we had a scene, we were gonna shoot Marshawn Lynch, and then Marshawn Lynch's back got tweaked and he needed, he couldn't come during our shoot. So we're like, okay, I guess that's not, it's not gonna happen. We didn't need the scene. And so we're done. I mean, everyone's wrapped. And then we get a call going, hey, Marshawn can come. So we call FX and we go, we really need this scene. And we're also huge uh, Seattle Seahawks fans. We lo- we're like, we need this scene. And Nick Rab's like, do you really need this scene? And uh, we're like, yeah, yeah, we really need it. We really need it. So it's going to be expensive. We've got to get everybody back. We've got to get all this crew. And he goes like, just get my uh, son a hat. We're like, okay, fine. So, so now we've done this. We've Put everybody back together. You were going on a trip to Europe that day. Yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, I remember we had to get out like right at a certain point. And so everything's set, and he, Marshawn was supposed to come in the night before, and he'd be there for the day, the day of. And it's that morning, and we're all there, and he was supposed to come with his agent, Doug Hendrickson, and no one's there. And we're like, uh oh. So we call Doug, and I go, hey Doug, where's Marshawn? And he goes. I don't know. He's supposed to come in last night. I haven't heard from him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We're like, okay. Well, you got to find him. Then. We were just waiting. We're just sitting there. Everyone's all excited. Marshawn's coming. And we get a call back, and he goes, um, I got a call from him. He's, he got in an accident on the way to the airport in Seattle. Um, his phone was in the car, so he couldn't make it. Um, he's in Seattle. And we're like, okay, well, we can fly him out. How we can fly him out? But he's got to go on a family trip to Europe. Like that. So we're like, this is, we're like, I don't. By the way, everyone is together. The crew is ready to shoot. Oh, no, shoot. we're supposed to be shooting. Standing in that parking lot. We're like waiting at, like, because that bus was supposed to pick Marshawn and his agent up at 10.30 at the hotel. And so we're sitting there just going, oh, boy, we really did it this time. Because we didn't need this scene. This is just we wanted it. And, and we're going, we're, Jackie and I are going, we're totally, I mean, this is expensive. And so the agent who is freaking out is like, hey, I'm so sorry. I don't know. I can't fix this. He's standing outside the hotel at 10.30. At 10.30, right when the van is supposed to ping him up, Marshawn walks out and goes, hey, man. And he'd been with his agent, because his agent was so nervous. So by, and all Marshawn thought was, oh, I'm playing a prank on my agent. What he didn't realize that he was giving all of us like a heart attack and the entire, uh, you know, 20th Century Fox News broadcasting, court, all that stuff. So he came and was like, he showed up right when he was supposed to do, did everything and was just, it was the scariest moment we've ever had. We're like, we wasted so much money. Excellent. All right, this is our last question. Can we do two speed round questions? Like, yeah, like real two quick. Two speed round questions. Here we go. Here we go. Speed round. <laughs> go yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah, in the middle. All right, so I know it's crazy most of the people are like, I'm not going to get Rob Jeff to go off the rails with Rob Jeff. I'm not animated. Dying. What's the question? <laughs> speed round. I'm not going to go crazy last time. Like, Rob Jeff is a football Terrible question. Get out Boom. of here. Boom. Done. <laughs> Another, another question. Him. Speed round question. Who's Get got? him out. Get yeah. him out. This oh, is interesting it. Interesting question. This is interesting. the You're... billion dollar question. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. It's like at the time, fantasy football was... Oh, well, the question was, was will we ever see a reboot or anything like that? I mean, at the time, fantasy football was popular, but I don't know. Is that still a thing? Is, did that... <laughs> 
I, Are I, friends still a thing, Jackie? Is that the thing? <laughs> I thought it wasn't a show about but fantasy here's the football. Thing. Busting balls isn't a thing anymore, is it? Are people still out there busting no, it's balls? A, it's, it's people a, don't like friends It's a kinder, anymore. gentler time. However, I will say um, there is nothing on the planet more fun than working with these people. This is the, the, it is like, it is the funnest thing. It was, I can certainly say for both of us, it was the most creatively fulfilling, like most fun thing you could do in the world was to go onto the set with these guys and just make each other laugh. It was an extremely, extremely fun experience. I mean, I will say that out of everything that I've ever done, the amount of freedom that you afforded us, but the amount of control that you had in your own ideas. I feel like a lot of times when people hear like improvising, it's like, go in there and we'll figure it out. And you guys had so much fun stuff to give us. Like, it was basically like, here is a room full of all this great stuff. You could put on this or this. And we went in so many different directions. But you created this amazing environment to get, like, these things that we would never have gotten. It was a really a group-building thing. And that's with all the cast. It's with all of you. It's like, and because... There, people don't know this, but on this show, there was only one direct. It was just them directing. So we never had to bring in anybody else. There was no third party. No, was there, was, I was there was no one else on the set except us. And that was it. And yeah. that's a really free Not even thing. a crew. We shot the whole just thing the whole ourselves. Thing. I mean, there was Wayne There's the Wayne. Medic. You'd Wayne go, the you'd medic. push the button. Wayne, a, a right bull, a bull who held a sound boom, a boom mic. When I wasn't I, on screen, yeah, I was sound guy. I was set deck. Makeup. So the answer is... And I was know. a monkey fluffer. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your work. Um, I think there's a difference in that question, too. Could you reboot this show now? Would it have the same impact? I don't know. But I think people would be excited to see this show do something because it's already established. Yeah. Okay, last speed round question, right? Making story right yeah. there in the head. Three cameras, and that's actually a really interesting process question because the biggest fight we ever had with the network was um, after the pilot, they did not want to allow us to have three cameras. And we almost didn't make the series, and Jeff and I said we will not make the series without three cameras. And then Jeff and I found a way to make that happen, but um, uh, they wouldn't give it to us. They just, they held their ground and would not give it to us, and we said we wouldn't make it without three cameras, and that's how the show got done. And then Too now, much good stuff. We didn't want to lose yeah, it. Yeah, you can't. You can't ask them to make that fresh again. Um, and, and, and covering the show, the group scenes. we always say covering the show was like covering a live comedy sporting event. That's what it was like. I mean, these guys, and I don't brilliant, know. Brilliant, brilliant cameramen. I mean, we are so lucky. I have to say, many, as, as Nick said, you know, obviously incredible crew, many, many talented crew members went into making the show possible. And, and for me, one of the departments that really made it happen was the cameraman who had such an intimate relationship with the actors on set that before they started, they'd say to the cameraman even, I, I got something. And, and they would have this very tight sort of dialogue about when they would swing over, you know, Johnny, you know, all these patterns. And that's the thing, guys. like, uh, Johnny, I still see Johnny on The Good Place now because he's now on that show. And it is, it's fun because you develop a shorthand with those guys because especially if you are improvising, especially if you are going to be doing something that is not anticipated, not planned for, but you, and sometimes I would plan or want to do something that I wouldn't tell the other people in the scene I was gonna do, but I had to tell Johnny or whoever uh, to cover because when I was gonna, I was gonna enter earlier. The watermelon. Whatever. And those, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the Margaret watermelon scene well, that, is an that's, example. That second hole didn't make itself. Oh yeah. God. Does anybody um, know what he's talking about? The consensual, non-consensual entry points of the watermelon? <laughs> But, you know, like, that's the thing is that, that crew, it is, Jeff's right in describing it as intimate because it would be very few people, very few uh, camera ops uh, you know, in these small houses or in these spaces where everybody, because what we're doing is improvising, everybody's hearing lines for the first time and cannot break. And that's and something Jeff, and, Jeff talked a lot about. You know, except a lot. for Jeff. Yeah. Jeff would break. Oh, I would break. Also, if Jason was talking, Nick would break. <laughs> yeah, when you talk about coverage, we needed a whole camera to figure out at what angle did you not see Nick's oh, shoulders by the way, shaking hold, when we hold were going to film him in a scene. Whitney with Houston, with Whitney Houston said, "What's Michael Jackson think about it?" That those three lines, I'm not kidding, took 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 that minutes scene, is generous. I will say there is an you, there's a YouTube video of me and Nick trying to shoot that scene, and it's pretty nuts. <laughs> 
It was almost impossible. I find Whitney Houston's death hilarious. <laughs> The quad split where, where Nick just punishes Jason and goes, get him in the corner, I can't work like this. <laughs> and puts, Nick, puts Jason in the corner and then he goes, I can still see him and Jason has to turn around and face a bookcase and, and speak you, quietly into his mic so that Nick could try to concentrate. And to just to kind of like flesh out a little bit more too, like the three cameras, what it afforded was that you had coverage, but then what Jeff and Jackie would do very surgically would be like, all right, we just did like this 30 minute take, more of this, less of this, move that up here. Like, yeah, so we would do it three or four times. Take time. by take, everything would get refined it was a lot about down trust. to, we and knew they would these find guys, the scene. So, we knew that you yeah. guys would come up with the funniest stuff and you guys trusted us to give, to make the best stuff out of, out of everything you didn't put in the show. And, and that was the most interesting thing to be like, oh, this first take was 20 minutes and at the end, we might be doing a three minute take, but it's all tight. So we're, we're it's, it was a, that's, I think, that's the difference between, I think, good improv on TV, because I don't think that people understand that that was an element of the show. It's, it's just really crafting it and, and being and thinking on your feet and writing it and figuring out every what's scene, working. Every scene is a live rewrite. Yeah. That's what it is. Wait, I have a quick process question in that regard then. Um, what, I know there's a lot of screenwriters out here. What does a script then for the league look like at what point um, is there exposition and then it, a blank space for It always was emblazoned property of JSV, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, like, it's like a people would be, might be surprised here. It's about, you know, a 12-page, single-spaced um, pages document, document. Pages document. It's not in final draft or anything. With dialogue that's in there that makes the show if it's not better than, you know, if it's better than something that you guys said. So it, we would always give them stories and jokes. But, but, and if they had better stuff, which a lot of times you guys did, we would then riff off of that and then it was rewrite like, but it, it always on, a, on you site. Try this and all the great but, stuff. Yeah, the but, core but, plot was there. Yeah, the the way, there was not, it wasn't like we're one, just... One thing, looking yeah. at it was like looking at a treatment. Well, you're looking yeah, at a treatment. Oh, one of last thing state. about process, like Seinfeld, Curb, and The League are all written the exact same way. Exact same way. Come up with really funny stories and you put them on a dry erase board and you do this comedy geometry to make sure that these stories intertwine to a, a really successful ending. For Seinfeld, we'd spend a few days writing the script. The structure was everything. For Curb, uh, we have the outline, you don't write the script. And the league was like a little bit in between where we would have some lines because there's six people and you want to try and do some air traffic control. But the whole idea is the structure is funny, the story is funny. If you say what's happening in the scene, it's funny. Then get the funniest people on the planet to do it their way and, and get ready for all these amazing magical digressions when Paul pulls out his phone and goes, oh, I got a slam list on here. We're like, okay, we're doing that now. You know? You know? <laughs> But it also, I think, is a testament to you guys, again, in the casting of getting the right group of people. I think the idea of doing an improvised comedy show about fantasy football is like a perfect recipe for douchebag stew. And, and it wasn't... Douchebag? Which is my douche film that's premiering here tomorrow, Douchebag yep. Stew. 11 it's p.m. over at the Paramount. But there was not never sold out. any... Ego about who got the funny, who got the laugh in the scene, who got the funny moment. If it made more sense that Ruxin's line was said by Kevin, it was easily tossed over. Or you know what would be so funny if, if, if Andre said that? It was just a very generous, it was all about just making the best scene. Yeah, we really fed each other and fed into each other. And that was something that I feel like it was very... I don't know, fair and fun. And I well, think that was yeah. it. I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of us come out of I an improv background, and everybody can improvise on this stage really expertly. But like the ethos of improv, of like yes and and support, and you know, if, you, if you're going to do an improv show with eight people on stage, the, the kind of tacit understanding is I'm going to make you look good, you make me look good. You know, and I feel like. No. <laughs> And I well, feel like that was really evident. Like this was a this was a process that was a lot of times grueling and long, uh, long days, long takes, trying to find stuff and meandering and then honing and honing. But it was because there was like a lot of trust in the ensemble to try it this way. Or like Katie saying, "Oh, what if instead you say this and I come in and da da?" Like the geometry and the math of it, making that work on its feet, wouldn't work if it was if people were. It would be insufferable. Yeah, but because everybody was like trying to solve the same problem and using different methodologies to do it, a lot of times in a very kind of compelling way, we could we could pick our way through a big scene that might have seven people all improvising their dialogue concurrently, and I would still get to do it. 
joke. <laughs> uh, um, what better place to end? Thank you guys so thank much. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs>